There was a weak man named Ahab that came to the throne of Israel, the northern half of the kingdom, 918 B.C. He lived up in Samaria, close to the Zidonians, who were Baal worshippers. Ahab married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians. Jezebel was known for her religious zeal. She despised the God of Israel and promoted Baal worship throughout the land. Find all the prophets of Jehovah and kill them. Baal will be our God. The king had a servant named Obadiah who worshipped Jehovah. I must find the prophets of God and warn them. Obadiah hid 100 prophets in a cave and brought them food and water. But there was one prophet of the living God that wouldn't stay hidden, Elijah. O King Ahab, because you have forsaken the God of your fathers and followed your wife Jezebel in working wickedness, Jehovah says there will not be rain or dew upon the land of Israel again until I command it. Ha ha! So you think you are a prophet, do you? Well, I have a thousand prophets, and they say nothing of a drought. We have had plenty of rain these last years. You pious fraud, get out of my way! As the famine got worse, people began to starve. The false prophets called on Baal, but Baal could not answer. The drought continued with not a drop of rain or dew. God sent Elijah down to the home of a widow woman, telling him that she would give him a room and feed him until the drought was over. Could you bring me a drink of water, please, and a little bread to eat? I tell you the truth. I have enough flour and oil left to bake two little pieces of bread. I was just about to cook it for my son and I. We were going to eat it and then lie down to die. There is no hope. God is punishing us for our sins. Do not fear. God will take care of you. Bake the bread you spoke of and bring it to me first. Afterward, you and your son can eat. For this says Jehovah, God of Israel, your barrel of meal and your jar of oil will not be empty until the day God sends rain upon Israel. It's true. There is still flour in my barrel and oil in my jar. We can't pour it all out. It just keeps coming. It's a miracle. God is good. For the next two years, the three of them ate bread from that one barrel of meal. One day, Elijah came home to his room in the widow's house to find that her son had died. He came down with a fever and died. What have I done to hurt you? Did you come here just to remind me of my sin and for God to kill my son? There is still a God in Israel. O oh Jehovah, let the soul of this child come back into his body. God heard the prayer of Elijah and sent the boy's soul back to re-enter the dead body. Thank you, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You alone are God. My son! I told you there was a God in Israel. The famine continued for three years. The people were starving, but they continued to worship the false god, Baal. Why doesn't Baal hear us and send rain? Maybe Baal is just a dumb idol. He doesn't have any ears. Jezebel and Ahab blamed Elijah for the famine. 
They sent soldiers throughout all the land and even into neighboring countries to find Elijah. Their orders were to kill him on sight. Send us Elijah. If you are hiding him, you will be killed. Ahab, are you looking for me? Are you the one that has been troubling Israel with this famine? You are the one that is troubling Israel with your idols. Let us have a contest between Jehovah and Baal. Bring your 850 prophets and meet me at Mount Carmel. A contest, you say? Sounds interesting. We'll see you there. Several days later on Mount Carmel. How long are you going to stand between two opinions? There is only one God. If Jehovah is God, then worship him only. If Baal is God, then worship him. Make up your minds. I challenge you prophets of Baal to a contest. Then we will find out who is the true God. <laughs> yes, a contest between the gods. What shall we do? You build an altar to Baal, and I will build one to Jehovah. We will put wood on our altars and we will lay the sacrifice on the wood, but we will put no fire under it. You will pray to your Baal, and I will pray to Jehovah. The God that answers by sending fire on the sacrifice will be the true God, and we will all worship him only. Since you have me outnumbered, you can go first. O oh, Baal, hear us this day. We dedicate this sacrifice to your great name. O oh, Baal, the great and mighty! O oh, Queen of Heaven, come and help Baal this day! If Baal is a god, then he is not paying attention to you. Maybe he is talking, or just can't hear you. Or perhaps he is on a journey, or sleeping. That's it, he is asleep. And you need to shout louder so you can wake him. You dirty... You can't do any better. Let's not give up, men. Perhaps if we cut ourselves, Baal will be pleased. The prophets of Baal became desperate and began to throw themselves on the ground cutting their flesh and screaming so Baal would hear them. I offer you my blood, O Baal. Hear us. Send fire. Vindicate yourself! <laughs> Look at you. For nine hours you have been calling on a god that does not answer. If he was a god, surely he would take this opportunity to prove it. Now it is my turn. Come near and watch closely what I do. Oh, Baal, why do you not answer? Why is he digging such a deep pit? Huh, he is just stalling, hoping it gets dark. When are you going to start praying? This is not a digging contest. Go and get four barrels of water and pour it on the sacrifice and the wood. Water? It won't burn if you wet it down. This prophet is crazy. He will never live to see the sun go down. It is not wet enough. Pour four more barrels of water on it. Has he lost his mind? Why does the king put up with it? <laughs> is anything too hard for the living God? Pour four more barrels of water, and you will know there is a God in Israel, and his name is not Baal. Ahab will have his head for this. Stand back. Father, move on back. Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the only true God, that I am your servant, and that you have turned their hearts back to yourself. God of Abraham! It is scorching hot! Oh. 
Behold, the God of Abraham and Isaac has answered by fire. It even burned up the rocks and dirt. What kind of God is this that has no image and yet does this? Moses commanded that we should worship Jehovah God and him only. He commanded the death sentence on any sons of Israel that worship any other God. <gasps> No! Have mercy! Kill them! All 850! But we didn't know! Put them to the sword. Now. The prophets of Baal were all killed. O king, you will need to eat and drink and then make haste for home. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Three and a half years earlier, Elijah had told Ahab that it would not rain in Israel again until Elijah so commanded. With the prophets of Baal dead and the people once again worshiping the true God, Elijah commanded it to rain. A big rain would swell the rivers and prevent them from returning home, so they had to make haste or risk being cut off by the floods. Elijah, empowered by God, ran in front of the horses for the 20-mile trip back to the king's palace. Well, I suppose you killed that Elijah. I see that Baal is sending us rain. No, dear. Elijah is just outside. He ran ahead of my chariot all the way from Mount Carmel. That is ridiculous. No one could run that far ahead of a chariot. Where are the priests of Baal? We must celebrate the coming of rain. I had them all killed. They were liars and deceivers. You what? You idiot! You should have killed Elijah! But his god answered by fire. It was a miracle. Our priests were powerless. The people all turned to Jehovah. But honey, what else can I do? I feared the people! You killed my priests! You fool! No miracle will protect Elijah from the wrath of Baal. If I do not kill Elijah for this, let the gods do the same to me and more. I must get away. Elijah forgot to trust God and fled for his life. Oh God, I have had all I can stand. Let me die now before Jezebel finds me. I am ashamed of myself. I have failed to trust you. I am no better than my sinful fathers. Just let me die. Elijah fled for 40 days deep into the wilderness to hide in a cave. He came to Mount Sinai, the same mountain on which Moses received the Ten Commandments. There, God spoke to him. Elijah, what are you doing here? Everyone has forsaken your law except me. All of your prophets have been killed. I am the only one left that worships you, and they seek my life. Go and stand on the mountain before the Lord. As Elijah stood before the Lord, there came a strong wind, but God was not in the wind. Then there came an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. Finally, there was a fire from heaven, but God was not in the fire. God was trying to show Elijah that he was far more terrible than Jezebel. Then, when the wind, earthquake, and fire had ceased, Elijah heard God speaking in a still, small voice. He asked Elijah the same question he had asked before. Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah hadn't learned anything. He was still feeling sorry for himself, so he answered just as before. Everyone has forsaken your law except me. 
All of your prophets have been killed. I am the only one left that worships you, and they seek my life. All right, if you would have it this way, go and anoint Elisha to take your place as my prophet. And though you don't know it, there are 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed down to the statues of Baal and have not kissed his feet. Now go your way. All the family of Ahab shall die. Elijah found Elisha plowing with his oxen and anointed him to be a prophet. The Lord has said you are to be his prophet. I will sacrifice my oxen to the Lord and follow you immediately. Right next to Ahab's palace was a vineyard owned by Naboth. Ahab often looked out the window and admired its beauty, wishing it was his. The more he thought about it, the more he wanted his neighbor's property. The commandment says, Thou shalt not covet. But Ahab did not regard Jehovah. Ahab had plenty of money, so he decided that he would just buy the vineyard. Sell this vineyard to me. It is right next to my house, and I will give you a better vineyard somewhere else. God would not permit such a thing. This property has been in my family for over 500 years. The law commands us not to sell our land outside the family. Tell me, my dear, why do you not eat? Why are you so sad? Because Naboth will not sell his vineyard to me. You are the king. You have the power to do anything you please. Don't let one lowly peasant stand in the way of your happiness. I will get the vineyard for you. I will pay you more when the job is done. Now keep your mouth shut, or you may get the same. Moses' law says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. There, that's the one. Yeah, and he said the king should die. And he said God sends devils to possess the king. Then he deserves to die. They carried Naboth off and killed him. There, dear. Now you have your vineyard. You can't get ahead in this world unless you are ruthless. The strong survive. It is lovely, isn't it? I deserve it, don't I? Jezebel knew that her god, Baal, did not have eyes to see. But there is a god in heaven that sees every act and never forgets. Elijah, Ahab has gone down to the vineyard of Naboth to possess it. Go and meet him there. Deliver my word unto him. Ahab, God told me to tell you that you have killed an innocent man and taken his property. For this and your other sins, in the very place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, they shall lick your own blood. Has my enemy found me here? You cannot hide from God. Because you traded your soul for possessions, God will bring evil upon all your family. All your children and relatives will die, even the little ones. You have provoked God to anger. The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of your house. When a member of your family dies in the city, the dogs will eat his flesh. If they die in the field, the buzzards will eat them. None will be buried with honor. This is the word of the Lord. It shall come to pass. Please, I will start sacrificing to Jehovah. All that Elijah has said has come to pass. Ahab now sacrificed to Jehovah, but he did not follow him with a pure heart. Much later, the false prophets advised King Ahab on a military issue. Go up and fight at Ramoth-Gilead, and God will give you a great victory! 
And all the prophets agree on this? King Ahab, Jehovah has spoken to me. You will go up to Ramoth Gilead, and there you will be killed in battle. Don't pay any attention to Micaiah. He is not the only prophet of Jehovah. There are 400 of his prophets who say that there will be great riches and success at Ramoth Gilead. I hate Micaiah. He is so negative in everything he says. King Ahab, you have worked evil in the sight of God. You consult false prophets who take money for their services. They preach lies. I saw God sitting on the throne, and all the angels of heaven were standing before him. He asked, Since Elijah told Ahab he was going to die, he has been very careful not to get in harm's way. He must be persuaded to go into battle. Who can persuade Ahab to go to battle at Ramoth Gilead, where he will be killed? And one said one thing, and another offered another suggestion. After discussing it, one of the angels stepped forward and said, I have an idea that will work. I will go down and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his false prophets. I will tell them that Ahab should go into battle. That is a great idea. They will prophesy that he is going to be victorious, but when he gets into battle, I will have him killed. Go then. You think the spirit of Jehovah left me and spoke to you? You will know who has the spirit of Jehovah in the day when you go into an inner room to hide for fear of your life. What is this? Another prophecy? <laughs> Put this fellow in prison and feed him just enough to keep him alive until I come back from the battle. Then we will kill him. If you return from the battle alive, then I am a false prophet and would deserve to die. That was a good idea, disguising yourself as an ordinary soldier. They will never know you are the king, and our men are doing well. I can't wait to see that prophet's face when you come back alive. Yeah, and this armor will protect me against any arrows. The soldier shot an arrow high in the air, not aiming at anyone in particular, just hoping to hit one of his enemies. What? It is bleeding badly. Hang on! I'm afraid he is dead. The arrow found the one spot that was not protected by armor. I guess it was just his time to die. Oh God! No! Put his body in Naboth's vineyard until we have time to deal with it properly. Just as Elijah had said, the dogs were licking the blood of Ahab right under Jezebel's window. He was the first of his household. Others were to follow. After washing the blood from Ahab's chariot, the soldier returned to the palace. Where is King Ahab? Is he celebrating his victory? You fool! You are not a prophet of God. You are a liar. Ahab is dead just as Micaiah, the prophet of Jehovah, declared. But it can't be. All the devout men agreed Ahab would be victorious. Not all. Not Micaiah, whom you slapped and put in prison. When the people hear of this, they will have your head. You are free to go. Ahab is dead. Yes, I know. And no doubt the dogs have licked his blood as God said. Jezebel will be next, and all that are related to Ahab. God has spoken. I must hide. Oh no! Micah said I would know who had the Spirit of God on the day I hid in a small room inside of a room. Ahab's sons would reign in his place and twelve years would pass with Jezebel still living as queen. 
Israel would continue to worship false gods and break the commandments of God. God spoke against the house of Ahab, saying, The time has come. All of Ahab's family will perish, even the little children. None will be left alive. Jezebel will be eaten by dogs, and there will be no one to mourn her or bury her. I must paint my face so I will be attractive to General Jehu when he returns from battle. I will stand here where they can see that I am in charge. Who is on my side? We are with you, General. Then throw Jezebel down. You can't do that! I am the Queen! Dogs ate Jezebel and licked up her blood on the very spot where they licked her husband's blood, just as the prophet of God had said. But the dogs would not eat the dirty hands that had done so much wickedness. Just as the prophets had said, the rest of Ahab's children were all killed by the people of the city until there was none left of his family. Those who died in the fields were eaten by the buzzards, and those that died in the city were eaten by the dogs. Nothing was left to bury. Truly, the wages of sin is death. As Elijah prayed, young prophets came to Elisha to deliver a message. God has spoken to some of the young prophets. Did you know that today your master Elijah is going to be taken to heaven? Yes, God told me also, but be quiet. Do not say any more. Elisha, you stay here. I'm going to take a trip down to Jericho. As God lives, I will not let you out of my sight. I will go where you go. Did you know that your master Elijah is going to be taken up to heaven today? Yes, I know it. Now don't bother us. Keep this to yourself. I must not let him out of my sight. You stay here in Jericho. I must take a short trip down to the Jordan River. As surely as God lives and you live, I will not leave you. There were those young prophets following us again. How are we going to cross the river? It is running high today. On dry ground. Did you see that? The water stood up so they could pass. Yeah, just like with Moses. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. I wish the prophets of Baal could have seen this. What is it you would have me do for you before I depart? Give me a double portion of the Spirit of God that rests upon you. You have asked the hard thing. But it shall be done if you see me when I am taken up into heaven. A chariot of God. And a whirlwind. The chariot of fire separated Elijah from Elisha. Elijah was taken up to heaven in the whirlwind. Then all was quiet. Elijah was now in God's presence. All that is left is his mantle. It is what he used to part the waters. Where is the God of Elijah? The spirit of Elijah is upon Elisha. Man, this is some kind of day. Elisha went on to perform twice as many miracles as did Elijah. He was faithful to God, but the people would not completely turn from their idolatry. Where did Elijah go? We must go look for him. There's no use. He has gone to heaven. 